This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. So tech stocks aren't the only ones that are breaking out. Surprisingly, many of the old economy stocks are also doing so. And let's just call everything else the non-tech stocks. (laughs) Old economy and non-tech stocks. So I thought I'd look around and see, is there any value in some of these kind of older names or um, non-tech stocks, basically, and seeing if, you know, what's going on with those since a lot of those stocks are also now breaking out. So just this week, I was in a high-rise elevator here in Chicago, and some people actually talk to each other in it. Yes, it does happen sometimes. And someone mentioned something that was kind of backward looking. I don't remember what it was now. And she was kind of wistful, like, if only I had done blah, blah, blah. And it was like something I wasn't totally paying attention. But then another guy in the elevator replied to her and said, if only I had bought Apple stock 10 years ago. And then everyone else, including myself, because I was now paying attention, we all chuckled at this and shook our heads in agreement. Yes, what if we had bought Apple stock 10 years ago in 2009? But it also got me thinking, is Apple really the stock you should have been buying in 2009? And to the general public, you know, Apple has been such a big winner and everybody either uses Apple products or knows someone that uses them. So they just immediately think of, you know, buying that stock. So I took a look to see what happened if you had bought it 10 years ago. That's a good good metric to look at. And um, for Apple, it's up 1,252% in, in the 10 years. Um, but you were buying at the dark times. Don't forget, this is April of 2019 right now. And so 10 years ago, April of 2009, then the bottom of that cycle of the Great Recession was in March of 2009. So it was still basically the bottom. It was dark times. You had to be pretty strong stomach to be buying in April of 2009. But I took a look at the S&P 500 for the same time period, and it wasn't too shabby either. You're up 321% in the just the S&P if you'd just gone in and bought the indexes. But obviously Apple about um, four times the return of the S&P 500. But I also took a look at Amazon. And um, if you're like kind of kicking yourself about Apple there in the last 10 years, Amazon up 2,329% in the 10-year period. And but Amazon stock, I feel, just doesn't get the same pool in public's, you know, in people's minds that the Apple does for whatever reason. And that's why the gentleman in the elevator mentioned Apple and not the Amazon shares. So where does that leave the old economy industrials? You know, they're even further down the list. If people aren't paying attention to what Amazon's been doing over the 10 years, then they certainly aren't caring what the older Um, just other names other than technology are doing over this time period. But um, remember, again, we're coming off of those lows. So just about any stock you bought in April of 2009, um, give or take some of the retailers that went bankrupt and things like that. But most of those stocks, the 10-year charts, if they've survived this long, are now looking pretty good for you if you bought and held. So it's not just Apple. And I'm bringing this up because it's uh, a good idea for investors to be diverse, as I've talked about on the show. And a good investor should own more than just technology. Yes, I own a lot of technology in my portfolio, but I also have a handful of the retail side. I own some construction, some finance, and some other things. So you got to kind of diversify out even though the lure of technology is so great. So are th- is there any value in some of the older economy stocks or just the non-techs, as I keep saying? Because when I look at the list of the ones I found here, I'm not sure they're really old economy. I tried to find some of the old economy, but I'll talk about it in a little bit why that was a problem. But uh, these are just non-techs. So how do I find these kind of stocks? How do I screen for value um, from the old economy? Well, I did run a couple of screens here to see if I could like kind of pick them out. And I I initially started with the Zach's ranks of ones and twos, which I like to use a lot. Those are the strong buys and the buys because those stocks 
those should have rising earnings estimates. Those are the best of the best of the Zacks rank. And that's what we want. We want something good to be happening with those earnings estimates. Now, we're also in the middle of earnings season. So this can change daily, the rank, and, and likely will, because a lot of companies are reporting now. So the analysts are adjusting all those estimates. And some new stocks will surge into the ones and twos that were not there, even just every day. So you got to be cautious about that during earnings season. So it was a little hard to run the screen right now during earnings season. And, um, but I, I took the ones and twos, so we'll get what we get right now, but you're going to want to probably run the screen multiple times during earnings season. And then I use the PE of under 15 for the value component. I didn't use price to sales or price to book. I felt like that would be too narrow because then I am going to screen by industry or actually by sector. I use the Zach sectors here. I looked at the industries and I thought, nah, that's going to take me a little too long because there's over 200 of those. There's um, a lot fewer of the sectors, and so that would give me a broader grouping. So I started with the most obvious one if I'm looking for old economy, and that is industrial products. That's one of our sectors here at Zacks. And with the screen, with these few parameters, I got seven stocks. So one of the interesting ones on that list was H&E Equipment Services. I've mentioned them before. Their H-E-E-S is the ticker. Their P is just 12.8 right now, but they're... Uh, on the smaller side of the equipment rental companies. So there is United Rentals. They're cheap too, but they didn't show up in the screen. And then H&E Equipment is one of their competitors. They have a billion dollar market cap right now. They do pay a dividend, which URI does not, United Rentals. And their dividend is currently yielding 3.8%. So um, it's a good time to be equipment rental company right now because construction is still strong. The U.S. economy is still pretty much hum humming along. And we have that oil and gas sector returning to prominence again. And some of their equipment plays into that area. So this is one to keep on your short list if you're looking around on uh, the equipment side. So then I switched out of there and I thought, let's try the conglomerates. That's another sector that Zacks has. I only got two stocks in there and neither one did I think was like super interesting, but I'm going to mention them anyways. Uh, one is CK Hutchinson Holdings. C-K-H-U-Y is the ticker. Now, they are incorporated in the Cayman Islands, which <laughs> always sets up like a red flag when they're like... They say that they're listed on the Hong Kong exchange. So they're over in Asia and they are in five different areas, ports, retail, infrastructure, energy, and telecoms. So pretty wide variety here. They do pay a dividend yield, which is up at 5.6% right now. So that's pretty good. So if you're worried about legitimacy issues or things like that, because Cayman Islands and it's in Asia, um, at least you're getting something right now for your problems. Uh, PE is just 7.6. So it is pretty cheap. And then the second one is also big infrastructure type of play. Macquarie infrastructure. They even have infrastructure in the title. Um, MIC is the ticker. I'm probably saying that wrong, but as you all know, I say many of the names wrong, but just keep the ticker in mind. MIC PE is just 8.5 on this one and huge dividend yielding 9.7%. So I was kind of wondering how do we get 9.7, almost 10% dividend yield on this one? And that's because they invest in infrastructure in the U S in tank terminals, Atlantic aviation, and then MIC Hawaii, which distributes gas under Hawaii gas. So basically they've got that utility component, which is why you get that big dividend yield. So like I said, these are cheap, both of them. You do get dividends with both of them, but neither one is like super interesting to me as an investor if I'm looking for like a little bit more growth and that kind of thing. But I know many of you are looking for the dividends and cheapness. So you got that angle with those two. So then I moved over to the sector of consumer staples. I got three stocks in there. Not super interesting either, but JM Smucker is in there. SJM is the ticker there. Their PE right now is 14.9. I know many of you are not liking a lot of the food companies. So that's something to keep in mind if you're looking at that one. And then I screened under consumer discretionary too. I got 13 stocks. That's a little bit better. Some interesting names in that one, Norwegian Cruise Line, 
NCLH is the ticker with a PE of 10.6. Comcast, which I'm pretty sure is reporting any day now, CMCSA is the ticker. PE is 14.8 there. But I was kind of curious, like, where are the older industrials, kind of like the PPG Industries? I think they reported this week. Sherwin-Williams, Fastenal, the railroads, like some companies like that. Obviously, the rails are under the transport sector. So um, I screened over there. I'm getting some airlines, but the railroads, it's turning out, are all like just basically too expensive now. They're all mostly breaking out to new highs, and they had very good, solid earnings. I see the Norfolk Southern just reported, and they had a record quarter, so shares are soaring there. So I took a look at the PEs on this group of the the main four, as I like to call them. There are others, but the main four in the U.S. Um, CSX is trading at 18.2 times. UNP, Union Pacific, is 19.8 Kansas City Southern, KSU is 18.2 as well. And then Norfolk Southern, even before it got a boost off of its earnings, NSC is a ticker 19.3 times. So a little bit pricey for those rails now, even though that's old economy and a lot of people making fun of the rails for breaking out here. But um, they really shouldn't. They should know better. But it's still not not cheap. There are no values there. And also remember, I was screening for Zach's number ones and number twos. And a lot of companies, even if they just reported and had a beat and a solid quarter, takes a few days to get those analysts revisions in on the estimates. So some of them may be a rank three or even I've seen a couple fours. Um, especially those going into earnings that are happening this week or next week. So one of my favorite of the old industrials is Crane, ticker is CR. They're trading at just 13.9 times, but they are Zach's number four rank right now heading into their earnings report next week, I believe, they're reporting. So that's one I'm going to be watching. So I was kind of disappointed in the fact that I'm not getting many of the old industrials like Crane that I thought I might get. Um, A few others, again, are reporting like this week. So the rank is not correct on them. They're at least threes. Um, if not fours or something else. So waiting for the next earnings report to switch that rank a little bit. So that was kind of a drag on that aspect. So basically, a lot of the old industrials, what some of these screens are telling me, or even just the non-tech stocks, is that a lot of them are actually still pretty pricey. They're not trading with PEs under even just 15, let alone 10. Uh, I think if I would have screened for some of those healthcare stocks, might have been a little bit different story. And the banks, as we know, the financials are still one of the cheapest sectors out there. So I might have gotten some of those types of companies if I had screened for those. But I was looking for stuff outside of that, some of the manufacturers and, um, you know, the companies that have been around 100 years, like the rails that everybody knows and kind of mocks. But I think I'm going to have to wait and do the screen in a couple of weeks once we get some of those earnings revisions in and see if this has changed at all. But I'm still kind of intrigued by this list of stocks and kind of intrigued about some of those that are appearing already. And there still are some value stocks out there other than uh, the technology. And Apple, as you know, has always been the cheapest of the big kind of fang-like technology stocks, them along with like Intel have been among the cheapest of those, um, you know, old style, big cap technology stocks. And Apple continues to be despite its 1200% gain, because those earnings going up at the same kind of rate as that stock prices. So Apple hasn't reported yet, we'll see what happens. And if it gets more expensive here, But um, that's one to keep on your list as well. So let's recap the tickers I talked about today. And um, keep in mind that some of these uh, could change if we have earnings reports coming up in terms of the Zacks ranks. So Apple, AAPL, of course, um, H&E Equipment is H-E-E-S. Then we have those conglomerates. So C.K. Hutchinson Holdings is C-K-H-U-Y and Macari, I'm saying that totally wrong, we'll just call it M-I-C, is uh, M-I-C. And then we had Smuckers, S-J-M, 
on the food side, the Norwegian on the cruise ship and kind of leisure, NCLH, Comcast is CMCSA, and then Crane, which I'm waiting on, so it doesn't really make the screen yet, but it does have a value. PE is just CR. So we'll see what happens with um, all of these, like I said, so you don't want to miss a single episode of the Value Investor Podcast. We're still trying to find value, even though some of the value investors are thrown in the towel. Barron's just had another article about one of the older value funds shutting down right now. And it's been around since 2005. So it's hard to find value. But like I said, don't feel bad about buying some growth in there if you're a value investor, um, because it's it's not a bad thing to own some of both. So be sure to get us anywhere you can find us. We're on Spotify as a standalone show. The Value Investor Podify, uh, Value Investor Spot Podcast is on Spotify. And you can get us as a standalone on Apple Podcast under Value Investor. And as always, you can get us two for one on SoundCloud under the Zach's Market Edge logo over there. But be sure to get us somewhere. And I'll be back again next week with some more value stocks. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.